Well, welcome to our new video on stretching for the Achilles tendon. It's replacing our older version, which is kind of outdated. I actually had red hair back then. So in this video, what you're going to learn is the supplies you're going to need to stretch. We're going to get right into stretching, what to do. We're also going to talk about what not to do when you're stretching, what stretching is for. And if you stay awake long enough, there's going to be a bonus at the very end. So if you're one of our patients, what you're going to get for stretching is a custom Colts Blue stretching block. It's the official one. If you're at home and you're not one of our patients, you can just use a two by four, pretty easy. So let's get started. Go long. Got it. Okay, now stretching is gonna be baby steps. Uh, everybody's a little bit different and this is the average that we start people at when they begin their stretching program. Now when we do this, we wanna protect the back and we wanna protect the knees. So basically you're gonna be standing straight up and down. There shouldn't be a bend in the heat knees or the back, so we're protecting that. We're gonna start off with your foot against the wall, the block will go right behind your heel. So it's a, your foot length, so it's proportionate to every individual, not so much 12 inches. You're gonna put half your foot on the block, stand straight up, balance on the wall so you're not moving, and all your weight is on your heel. And you want the foot pointed straight ahead. Uh, we should feel just mild tightness at this point. It should not be uncomfortable. If it is uncomfortable or painful, you want it to go to something closer or something lower so your stretch is not as aggressive. Make sure you wear shoes because if you don't, it's going to be like stepping on Legos and be very uncomfortable. Uh, and never stretch with pain. Again, if it's painful, you want to go to something lower or closer to the wall. So we have the rule of three. The first part of that is you're going to stretch three times a day. And that's going to be the minimum to get our stretching done in four, you get the big success done in four weeks. The second part of that is you're going to stretch three times on each foot. The third part of that, each time you stretch, it's going to be for between two and three minutes. And that's kind of the hard part. So when you first start stretching, you're going to notice a little bit of tightness and probably around 30 to 45 seconds, that should disappear. It should, again, it should not be painful. We want to link these together, do multiple times because each time you stretch, you get an advantage where it gets more flexible each time. So if you're only doing it one time, it is going to be beneficial, but you're not going to get quite the benefit that you'll do when you do two or three times together. Now, when you're stretching the location of the tightness should be right about in here. If it's insertional, Achilles tendonitis, it's going to be a little bit lower. Again, never stretch with pain. It should be tight. Um, and once you get that point of relaxation, you're really getting the full benefit of the stretching. Uh, so there's some time hacks. You know, it's difficult to stay there for three minutes. And if you don't have a timer or phone or kitchen timer, what you can do, I know that I breathe 10 respir respirations per minute. I can figure out how long three minutes are. I know my heart rate is 57 beats. Or you, if you have a daily affirmation, you can time how long it takes to do per minute and figure out what it takes to go three minutes. And since we've been doing this, it's only been two minutes, which seems like an eternity. So the stretching is the easy part. The time sitting down there doing nothing but stretching is the harder part. Well, there's some do's and do nots you want to incorporate with your stretching program. While you're stretching, you don't want to bend at the hip, the waist, or the knee. You want to keep everything straight. There should be a straight line between your ankle and your shoulders. You don't want to have the heel lifting off the ground. There should be full weight on your heel and it should make full contact with the ground. You want the foot pointed straight ahead or slightly inward. Never have the foot pointed outward. That decreases the effectiveness of the stretching. There should be no bouncing. That's why we don't do this off of a step or stair. We don't want to have any movement in the muscle. We want to be a slow static change. And there's always improvement with stretching. Uh, we should see a, a continuous improvement with the duration of stretching. There may be some days when it's tight and you have to go a little bit closer to the wall, but uh, hopefully we continually get further and further away from the wall as the stretching improves. Now this is the part where we talk about why you should do the stretching. The Achilles tendon is involved with a lot of foot and ankle problems. Example, heel pain. Uh, it's a big player with both plantar fasciitis and the, child, the child's version of that called Seaver's disease. It's a big deal with insertional or Achilles tendonitis. Um, it can affect the big toe, uh, either bunions or where there's limited motion called hallux limitus is a big player or any forefoot pressure problem. When the heel comes off earlier than it should, it dumps all the weight on the front of the part of the foot and that becomes a big issue on repetitive strain. Now understanding this is the largest tendon in the body by far. Um, it took a long time to tighten up. 
uh, years and years and it doesn't stretch very early. So let's talk about some of the nerdy biomechanical and anatomical stuff. All the tendons of the body are, are very similar to a broom. They have the, the strands or the bristles that run straight down. Uh, so if you put your fingers in the broom, you'll be able to bring them straight down. With the exception of the Achilles tendon, where those fibers actually rotate around, becoming like a cable and therefore increasing the strength dramatically. Uh, everything in the normal sense, when everything's balanced out, things work really good. The strong muscles get along very well with the weak muscles. To give you an idea, look at the size of your calf muscle. Okay, now pull up your toes and the very front of your leg, look at that muscle that bulge out. That's the next largest muscle and that's about this big and it's going to argue with the muscle that's about this big. And really there's no argument involved with that. So when the Achilles tendon gets tight, it overloads all the other soft tissue as well as the muscles and that creates a problem. So what does this look like when you're walking? Well, watch somebody walk away. If you see a bouncy type of gait where their heel comes off the ground early, that's a tight Achilles tendon. Um, and it's transferring all the weight to the front of the foot again. And the answer to this is not so much strengthening the weak tendons, which you can improve their strength by 300% and it's not going to come close to what the Achilles strength is, or stretching out the Achilles muscle and tendon group. Again, this is not an overnight process. It will take probably four to six weeks to get measurable changes in that muscle group, or even months. Uh, with the exception if you have youth on your advantage, then you can see changes within two weeks. Now, if stretching is not becoming effective or you're just not able to do it that much, we can call in some assistance with an Aquinas brace or stretching brace. Now, a word of warning about these braces. They have to come above the knee to be a factor. Uh, or if you're using the ones that come below the knee, the foot has to be, or the leg has to be straight. You cannot bend the knee. If you bend the knee, you relax that muscle and you're not going to get any stretching at all with that at all. So you've done very well with staying awake, so you get to go on to the next bonus round. Now you've been stretching for a while, you've become pain-free. And once you're pain-free for a month, we can modify the stretching to save you a little bit of time. Now remember when we first started stretching, it was three to four times a day, three times each episode. That was really time consuming, but once you're pain-free, now we're on maintenance mode. When you start to stretching, what you're gonna do is the same way you did before, you're gonna be on the block, and instead of being stationary immediately, you're gonna slightly, slowly raise up and down and you'll do this about two or three times. And what you're gonna notice once you get to that point of where your heel's on the ground, full weight bearing on the heel, that that initial tightness is just gone. You're gonna save yourself between 30 seconds to 40 seconds per episode of stretching by doing this. But remember, you have to be pain-free at least a month before you start that. And again, you'd follow up with the typical length of time that you would hold the stretching. So, stretching is not sexy, it's time consuming. Um, if you decide to stop doing the stretching, you're going to see me again because it will, the pain will return. Uh, this is the big way for whatever foot and ankle problem you have to keep yourself away from surgery. And in case you didn't know, I'm Dr. Leibovitz, your central Indiana go-to foot doc.